You're listening to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Live. Hello, welcome to Garibaldi Red as Nottingham Forest end their run of five straight Premier League defeats with a 1-1 draw against Aston Villa to move off the bottom of the table. It wasn't pretty, but it was certainly better. And joining me to discuss the game, first of all, is former Reds midfielder Lewis McGugan. Lewis, good morning. You well? Yeah, yeah. Very well, thank you. Good, 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 good. And second guest today is Greg Mitchell. Greg, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Very well. Nice not to be <laughs> gone. No, go on. What you say? It's nice to be what? Not talking about a defeat? Yeah, yeah. A bit of a smile on my face this morning, which is good. Yeah, certainly, certainly. I mean, well, we'll come to you second, Greg, because you were in the game. But Lewis, you were out of the game. Lewis, you watched it on Sky, as did I. We were saying before we started recording, it wasn't the most entertaining, but it felt like a move in the right direction for Forrest. What did you make of it? Yeah, and I think everyone, everyone who watched or was at the game can fully understand it wasn't it wasn't the best of spectacles uh, as a whole, but at certain times needs most. And I think it was a it was a big point. It was a big performance in terms of isolation, in terms of the the period that the team find themselves in. What about yourself, Greg, in the ground? There was a lot made about the atmosphere beforehand and how the fans would ha- have their part to play. Was it, was it, did they live up to that? And what did you make of the game? I think so. I, I agree with it, was needs must, wasn't it? I mean, the formation was something we're not used to. And we, again, didn't get loads of the ball, but I thought we did a good enough job to at least get the point. Yeah, the atmosphere was great. It reminded me. Even pre-match, it reminded me of like the playoff games, the Sheffield United-style atmosphere and the nerves beforehand. But everyone knew that we had to do a job, and you know, if only it could have been like that. Some previous games, maybe we'd have, we'd have got something else. But I think it did help, and it was it was a battling performance. It was so. I'm I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you're coaching yourself now, Lewis, uh, further down the league ladder. But if you were coming off the back of five straight defeats as an, an attacking side, would you have gone the same way? You understand what Steve Cooper did about being more resilient, playing a lot deeper. Yeah, and, and the players will also understand it as well. And they, they feel it as, as, as well as the manager. And sometimes you get in a situation where you just have to kind of strip everything back, go back to basics and, and, and just be hard to beat. First and foremost, be hard to beat. And yeah, you start with a point. Worst case scenario, you, you leave with a point and, and you try and move on. Did you see a performance like that coming? Because after the Leicester game, I remember you tweeted a response to what I said, saying you were very worried for Forrest. Could you see that kind of turnaround happening in one game? I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it was a good bit of progress, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that if you look at if you look at the if you look at the game and you look at the team, like we said before before we came on air, Aston Villa were really poor. They was they were really poor throughout the game and. Sometimes you've got to take advantage of that. And if you look at back at last week, Leicester, who was going through a, a poor period, but that night everything's clicked really, and the likes of Madison and Barnes were were were, were very lively. So sometimes you need that bit of luck and certain teams come you play them and maybe their confidence is not it is not as high as it should be. And I think that helped not in the forest last night with probably where Aston Villa currently are. Looking at the team selection, Greg, when it was announced online, it wasn't particularly well received. You know, Steve Cook was still playing in a flat back four, and the midfield didn't have Mangala or O'Brien, who the fans are clamouring for. I can see why. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter if you play Steve Cook in a back four if you play that deep. But we didn't know that <coughs> at the time. What, what did you make of the team selection? Uh, I was happy and surprised to see Toffolo. And I think he did. A, he warranted that spot as well, and he did a good enough job yesterday, I think, to keep it. Uh, but yeah, it, it's tough with Worrell on the bench. You seemingly fit Worrell, and like obviously, Cook's a seasoned pro. Though I, I don't know whether Cooper's thinking we just need some stability, and we just needed. You know, I'm not saying Worrell isn't a level head. Of, of course, he is. He's a captain, but. Cook has that much experience in those situations. You know, every year at Bournemouth was a fight, wasn't it? So um, we got a point. We got a point, so it was worth it. Uh, I'm not sure about Coyote still, but um, it, I tell you what, I did like. Although some of those players we wanted to start were on the bench, the bench looked a hell of a lot stronger last night, and the substitutions that came on, they do 
they do give you a lot of hope. And I, I do think now, now they're starting to click a little bit more, that the bench is going to come into it so much more and having that power there is going to help us. Who stood out for you, Lewis, out of, out of, out of the Forest players on the night? I think in a game like that, when you just have to try and get some kind of solid performance and a and a solid base and a solid result, I think I think Yates he did really well. And I, I, and I sometimes you need that. Okay, on the ball we didn't really do anything, but we know that's not the strongest part of his game. But I thought it's just his attitude and the way he led the team. Uh, he was on the front foot. I thought it set it, it set a tone really. So uh, I think he stood out definitely. I want to ask you about Toffolo from what Greg was saying there, because have you ever been in the situation in a dressing room where you're in the team and a bigger name player or someone who's on more money or something like that comes in and takes your place? How, how do you respond to that as a player? Yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's strange, really. And, and, and that was the big thing where we spoke about last time in terms of the amount of players that have come into the come into the club. You look at most positions there's at least two maybe maybe three fighting out for one position but they're all players that are, are expecting and have come to not enforce the play and that's the biggest thing and the the likes of toffolo who's coming out I, I thought i thought he did well last night i thought he was solid uh, i thought he did his job and his thing now can i now build on that and try and get a run of performances but the biggest thing is is that the fact that the, the player who he's fighting for has also come here not to sit on the bench or not to be involved in the squad. So that's going to be the hardest thing throughout this season. And that will will remain the hardest thing for the manager to do is to is to keep this squad and these players happy. Is that the challenge for Renan Lodi as well now? Because it's a bit of a kick in the ego, isn't it, when you dropped after a few games? He, he's got to respond, doesn't he, you'd hope, in the right way? Well, that's the that's the kind of... The other side and the risk that you have when you bring these bigger players with a bigger reputation. This time last year, he was playing for Atletico Madrid, he was playing in the Champions League. So, like I said before, that he's not going to come and want to come and play for Nottingham Forest, who are maybe struggling in the struggling in the league, and and he's struggling to play. Uh, if that was to be a continued situation, I can't see him staying around for for long. That's for sure. Mm. What about Yates there, Greg, who um, Lewis mentioned? Uh, he was my man in the match as well. I don't know about you. I mean, it's his kind of game, wasn't it? It wasn't a flashy game, but needs must in a sense. And he he's everything Forrest needed on the night. Captain's performance, absolutely. He put everything on the line as well. The amount of times Yates goes in for something and he looks injured. And he's just such a battler. He's such an old school you know, battling midfielder and he did a captain's job last night and I know he did well because the internet have found Paul Henderson to have a go at now instead of him so yeah he did it he really did he shut up the the few you know haters he's still got out there he really did a job shutting them up last night it was a brilliant performance let me ask you two things off that then Lewis actually um we'll come on to Henderson in, in a sec uh, Ryan Yates I mean as a midfielder of the style you played, you must appreciate having someone alongside you who could do that kind of nasty side of the game, like a Paul McKenna type player, wouldn't you? Yeah, and I think that's what it is. It's it does get, it gets a lot of stick, but you have to you have to understand what he brings to the team. He's not in there to dictate play and to start getting the ball down and, and string pass around. That's not his game. That's not his strengths. His strengths is in there to. To set, to set a tone in that centre midfield, to get around players, to put his foot in and to win the ball back and to give it to the players who want to get on the ball, who have got that little bit little bit extra to go and unlock defences. True, true. I'm going to completely go off topic here and ask a question from the comments. There's a comment, there's a comment on Facebook here saying that on one of the FIFA games, Lewis, you were rated at 85. Is that right? I'm not sure about that, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a high number. I mean, fair play to you if you were. I don't quite think that's, uh, quite think that's accurate. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you, you, you never know. I've not played them games for, for a long time, but I'm not quite sure. But if it is, I'm more than happy with that, definitely. Yeah, well, out of all the comments, I should have picked one about uh, about the game itself, but I will pick a few more out from that. The other thing I want to ask about from what Greg said was Dean Henderson. Fans are on his back a bit now. Um, 
me, obviously, he shipped a lot of goals, but his kicking, it wasn't great. I mean, to me, that all feels a bit harsh. What do you make of Henderson so far? I'm not sure. Uh, and and uh, I, that's my honest opinion. I'm just not... I think in terms of his distribution, I think he's really, he's, he's really poor. For, for a goalkeeper of, of that standard of where he's played and where he's been, I think at times his, his distribution at times looks looks really poor. And if that's where the football is going and teams want to kind of play out to some to some standard, I think that has to become uh, a big part of his game. Uh, the big thing for me, I think, I think with Henderson, I think his interview when he left, I think that just put targets on his back. And I just think that it, set, it sets the wrong tone. It already it has you kind of fighting against people already. And as soon as you make a mistake or your form drops, people are ready to come because you put that target on your back. And I think it was, especially from a football club of Manchester United, I think it was very disrespectful. I think he didn't need to say anything. The fact that he got out of the football club and the fact that he got to play, still in the Premier League, still a fantastic club like Nottingham Forest, just go and, just go and let your football do the talking. I think when you start trying to come against and say little things, I just, I just think it opens you up. When opens you up, because you're always going to go for a blip in the season. It's just reality. And when that happens, when you kind of start like that and say the stuff you've said and, and make that target, I just think people are waiting to come down on you. Um, let's jump ahead to the Villa goal and we'll skirt back to the Forest goal then since we're talking about Henderson. I mean, from a coach's point of view, Lewis, could Forest have done much more to prevent that? Do you look at Henderson? Do you look at maybe could Brennan have got a bit tighter to Young to put him off? Yeah, I looked at, I looked at the goal again this morning. Listen, Henderson, there's nothing he can do about that. It's, it's a great strike. Uh, it's, it, and it's come through uh, a body. I think it's come past Cook like late. He's not really seen it till late. So there's not there's not a lot that you can do about that strike. It's just one of them where you have to sometimes take your hat off and, and, and say it's a good strike. And the build up to it, I th- there's nothing really in it. It's a long kind of diagonal ball. What Watkins has won, which and it and it's fell. Yeah, some people are probably saying that Yates maybe f- could have been a foul, but I think he was already going down before the contact was made. Uh, yeah, I just think it's one of those things. I th- you can look into sometimes look into too much and try and critique uh, little things and, and make something that's not there, but. I don't think the from a coaching standpoint or from a team, I don't think that, that there's a lot that could have changed prior to it. It's just one of those things it's landed in and it's been a it's a good try. Yeah, I agree. I mean if Forest are generally on course, you can see thirty eight goals from outside the box. So I think that puts a bit of a spotlight on this one, but I think you have to say fair play to Young. What about the start of the game then, Greg? Could you feel a nervousness about the team and in the stands as Forrest got underway? No, there wasn't a nervousness. There was a uh, the big game feel that we've missed the last couple of games. And I, I do genuinely think that's because it was Fulham and Bournemouth. And, oh, we always play them. It didn't feel like a Prem game. It felt like the big game that we needed, just like the West Ham game. You know, the, the Cooper situation was just, it was brilliant that it was resolved before that. And I think it really did change the result last night. Um, and the fans just got behind the team. And I thought it was a good start. I thought it, they really kept us involved in it. And um, you could see the players were like, I can't remember who it was, one of them going up to A block and giving it that. And it, it really got, got them going. And I think that's what they needed. So, um, yeah, not a nervousness, but... It was good. Everyone was in the right direction last night. Yeah, I think it was a thing on Sky where you, in the huddle, Yates said, Toy must be quiet and listen to this when they sang Mull of Kintyre. I mean, oh, right. was they, were they singing Mull of Kintyre when you were playing, Lewis? They were, weren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Does, yeah. does it have an impact? Yeah, it has a it has a massive impact. I think them, there's certain football clubs that you go and play at and they have that kind of pre-song before the game, when it's a full house. I always remember Leeds. Leeds is another, when it really gets going, that that little little bit before the kickoff, sometimes as an away player, it just unsettles you. And you just think, yeah, this is this is a big atmosphere. This is this is gonna go there the, the fans are right behind the team. And it, it sometimes can just put put that uh, away team off definitely. 
Uh, talk about Forrest's goal. I mean, uh, Lewis, as we said, Forrest couldn't do too much about it. But if you're Gerard and Villa, you've got to be pretty fuming about the quality of the defending, even if you give Dennis credit and Gibbs White credit for the delivery. Yeah, I think I think the I think from a Aston Villa point of view, they'd be really uh, disappointed with the with how how they conceded that goal. Even where he's headed it from, it's not. It, it, he's got at least three Villa players around him. All not kind of none of them are really close. I think Mings is is, is nowhere near near Dennis at the time. So from from their point of view, they'll be they'll be uh, definitely disappointed with that. But from a non not even Forest point of view, you take you take everything you can at the minute. That's for sure. And the free kick, uh, the actual awarding of it. I think Don Goodman said on Sky he didn't think it was a free kick. I certainly thought it was when I saw it. Yeah, uh, it's one of those things. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Some people think it's harsh. But, listen, you get them, sometimes you get them decisions for you and you've got to take full advantage of them. And, and Nottingham Forest did that, definitely. What did you make of Emmanuel Dennis then, Greg? Because fans have been kind of clamouring for him to star. He's been making these appearances off the bench. After the game, Steve Cooper said he's been carrying a shoulder injury and that's why he's not really featured so much. But he finally got his chance. He got his goal. What did you make of him overall? Uh, he, he scored, didn't he? So it's good. If he can score a goal every game, it's going to be great for us. Uh, he was, It was quiet, but it was quite quiet up there for for the majority of them, isn't it? Which is going to happen most of the season, the position we're in. Um, but yeah, he, he scored. Like Lewis was saying, Aston Villa are going to be disappointed with that. But when you watch the goal back, it Gibbs White, as long as he puts it on his head, he, it's almost going in, isn't it? There was no one challenging him. Uh, so yeah, he made it look easy and he took it well. And that's all you can ask from him, really. But um, yeah, he's still not going to be, you know, fully match fit is he he's just not getting the game time so I'd like to see him start again on Saturday to be honest you know yeah. give one of these strikers a good run he did go he gave the ball away a lot of the second half but he looked bright in the first half I mean is that a mm. thing Lewis from your love for coaching if your centre forward scores a goal and there's absolutely nothing else in the game are you <laughs> nothing, in that? nothing. I know I'm saying I know, yeah. so. <laughs> with, with, with with my standards and the players uh, if you spoke to would say no I'm you know I am um, you, you expect a little bit more, but at the end of the day, that's what he's in the team to do, uh, to score goals. Uh, but I, 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 I heard the manager say after the game, I think he's been carrying a few knocks. I think he's not really had a lot of continuous training. And I think it's been a bit stop-start since he's come to the club. So I don't think that helped. And, and like Greg said, overly, possibly now, maybe a run of games that will that will help him. Uh, and, and hopefully he gets that. We should have an obligatory Brennan Johnson discussion briefly, because again, he's getting stick online, and I thought he was all right. I thought he worked pretty hard, and the service into him was pretty poor, because it felt like to me, Lewis, there were chances to knock the ball in behind Ashley Young a couple of times, or, or do you think Brennan has to do better? The big thing for me, I, I I've... I think he's not in young Forest's brightest spark. I think he's at times. I think he's what who people are looking at. But in terms of the kind, and I've and I've seen a bit of the uh, the fans and, and the stick that he gets. But the way I see it is that even last year at times, a lot of the games that I watch, he he doesn't really contribute a lot in a game. But he comes up with moments. Now, last year, you you could watch a game and 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 you don't really see him. Then he pops up with a goal, and, and at times that like, you don't watch a game and you see he scored two, and you think, well, he must have had an unbelievable game. But in reality, he probably hasn't really contributed that much. But he's just popped up with the important goals at the time. And I think the problem is is that this year in a Premiership, what? Where you have, if you have that, where you come in and out of games, last year, where you have three, five, maybe chances, they maybe go to one and two this year. And that's the, I, I think that everyone's missing the point of, that's what he kind of did last year. There's no real difference. It's just the fact is this year, the chances uh, are not as, he's not getting as many chances as he did last year in the championship. And I think that's, 
what it is. I don't think that his performances has really dropped that much. It's a, it's a different league, a harder league, and the opportunities to to maybe come and get them special moments are are going to be harder to find. But that's that, that that's the way I see it. In the comments, the, the first one after I said that was Brennan was awful. So I see people, you know, are divided on him at the very least. Someone else says, uh, Alan says in the comments, Greg, that he's missing Ghana. Is there an argument he's missing Jed Spence as well? And then he had Aurier behind him stay last night instead of Williams? Or, or am I just giving him excuses? I think um, there's a defence here for Henderson and for Johnson in the fact that Henderson's getting so much more of the ball. So there's so many more chances to pick faults with him. And Johnson just isn't getting the time he was last year. So, you know, when he does get these rare opportunities, he's he's got to take them or people like us are on his back. So it is a lot harder for him, a lot harder. And if he was playing in the championship this year, he'd be ripping it up. But he's a quick learner and he'll get hold of it. Look, look where he came from literally nowhere with us, from a player that you think was going to get loaned out to one of the players of the season. There's a quality person in there and it, it will come out when he gets his chances. I suppose people are going to look at Gibbs White as well and say, well, he had a better game and he's doing more. But are they different kind of players, Lewis? I know they play in similar positions, but they're not the same, are they? Yeah, they are, yeah they're completely different players. Completely different players. I think that that Brennan's that, that last man, very sharp, always looking to kind of run in behind and, and, and on. And, and look into those areas where Gibbs White has more come to feet, wants to be on the half turn and wants to pick up them little pockets. Uh, and, I thought, and I thought last night he was, uh, he, had, he had little good glimpses and good spells, but that's the big thing. And I, and, I, and I back to Johnson, back to Gibbs White, is that in the championship, you get more of that opportunity. Whereas this year, them little good spells or their little glimpses are going to be coming so few and not going to be as often as, as, as last season. So when that opportunity comes, they've got to try and, and, and be as, 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 as creative as possible. But listen, it, it's, it's tough. It's so early on. The, the, the way the team's kind of gone in the last few, three or four games, that won't help them. They, they're, the team is going through a bit of a cycle. So that's going to affect the, the players like Johnson, like Lingard, like Gibbs White, because we're not because we're not in control of games as much as we was maybe last year and, and at the start of the season. So I think it will I, I think they'll come good. I think it's just little little situations that sometimes they get the rubber of the green and and it's a completely different conversation we're having. Do you get that sense about Gibbs White, Greg, that he will come good? Because he felt to me like he almost had a really good game last night. He did a lot of good things, but didn't quite happen for him in a way. Yeah, he, he will come good, definitely. He's already shown sparks. I said it in the last episode that time when he came on against Everton and he lit it up. Uh, and he set up a goal yesterday. He got a good assist. So, yeah, it's going to come good for him. And it, it'll probably be sooner, sooner rather than later, I'd say. So talk about... The second half then and the way Forrest went about it. They didn't really well, they sat very deep, they made a couple of changes, but didn't really make the change that Villa made. Villa were throwing striker on after striker after striker. It felt a bit desperate to me, actually, and not very sophisticated, but that's for a different podcast to discuss. What did you make of the way Forrest went about the second half, Lewis? Would you like to be more positive or was it the right pragmatic approach still? Yeah, I think to be fair, I think Villa for the first 10, 15 minutes. The second half, I think they up they, they they did up the levels a little bit. Still, didn't really get any kind of end product. They had a lot of the ball. Every, a lot of it was in front of the Forest players. It wasn't really hurting them. But I think they tried to kind of up it a little bit. But like I said, with the situation that that the team are in, is the first thing to do is, is is retreat, and you just kind of go into a bit of a defensive shape and a defensive mindset and that's just that's not down to the players in a sense it's just the current the current situation and, and we they know that these points are 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 going to be really big especially even the point last night you look at the next six fixtures <clears throat> and you think to yourself where you're looking at the points to, to kind of get and Maybe Wolves next week, but they're in the same position. They are really struggling. They need the points. Brighton, again, 
especially at home, are a really, really tough team this season. And then you've got the two big ones. So with Brentford to follow up after that. So that kind of can fall into that place where, yes, OK, everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to take maximum points. But I think it was important last night not to lose and to try and stop that little bit of a, a, a rock that what has been on. And they did that. So take the point and and, uh, and try and move on. That's that's the way I see it, yeah. How many points are you taken from those next six games then? You listed them there. Uh, I think you have to look at Wolves as, as an opportunity, especially with the situation that they're they're in. I think Brighton on a Tuesday night is is, is going to be tough. And then, yeah, you look at the two after that. Is any them 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 fixtures or anything from there as a as a bonus? And you look Brentford at home, which. They've kind of stuttered a little bit and maybe you might catch them at the right time. But yeah, it's a tough next six, that's for sure. What about you, Greg? I thought I would take five points from five games or whatever it is, or six from six. I've was... only put Forest on 10 or 11 points, but I'm okay with that. What about you? I was looking at four points from the next three. And I know it might be seen as optimistic, but we get a point at Wolves. Brighton's a tough game. Liverpool are just a mid-table <laughs> team this season. <laughs> so we get we get a famous win against them at home. They're not the team they were the last couple of seasons. They're down a bit. You know, people are getting on Klopp's back. That'll be the biggest atmosphere of the season so far. And I really see something happening there, something special, because it's not unthinkable. <laughs> I do like that. I mean, it's, it would be amazing and Liverpool aren't the team they were. Is Greg mad there, Lewis, or not? No, no. I have to actually, listen, they're, they're going through a bit of a, of a transition period and not really sure what, what's really happening. And I think the big thing is the home crowd, the home atmosphere. I think it's an early kickoff. And I think sometimes them situations like uh, I heard uh, seeing uh, Yates say on his interview last night, got to treat kind of every home game as like a cup final. Mm. And and them games like Liverpool at home and the big, when they come, they're the games where hopefully the atmosphere, you're looking for an off day and it can happen. So it's, it's not it's not strange to think that because it's happened before and it, it can happen again. You just hope that you can you can catch them on an off day. Um, let's get back to the game and just finish talking about that then. Uh, the midfield, the way it finished with Kriate, Freuler, Yates, Greg, is that the long-term midfield or do you still think when Mangala is fit again yeah. and O'Brien are going to be pushing for places as well? Definitely. O'Brien's. I think O'Brien's missed and I love when O'Brien and Toffolo play. And Mangala, he was on the bench, wasn't he? So he must have been fit enough for that. Uh I see Mangala like taking over from Coyote uh, more than likely, but no, I mean it was fine. It just I think if everyone's fit, hundred percent fit, I don't think that's the midfield. Although I did like the fact that we we put a bit more strength in there because we've been we've been missing, haven't we? Like we've been a bit empty in the midfield, say against like Leicester and teams like that. So I think we learn and four three three is not not a formation Cooper wants to play. I'd imagine, but. It worked last night and, you know, a point isn't going to keep us up by no means, but it's a start, isn't it? It's a stepping stone and and, we, and we'll move on from there and eventually these points will start turning into three. Because, I mean, we mentioned before, didn't we, that um, we've been ahead in five of the nine games this season. We can score goals and we can, we can be in that winning position and then having that steady midfield hopefully is going to, keep us in those winning positions going forward yeah it's got to be part of a process hasn't it i mean take that game out of context you say it wasn't great but if it's part of a building block to something better mm. putting that jigsaw together we've discussed then yeah it's a real good positive moment i think i mean we've got a forest mid former forest midfielder on we should ask him what forest best midfield is out of those five or six competing for a place lewis who, who are you going for longer term <sighs> Yeah, it's tough. I think I think Mangala made a, a really good impression, and I think that's where a lot of the fans and a lot of people are kind of voicing their opinion for him towards Jake. I think the impression that he made early on uh, was a good one. 
I think Yates right now, uh, especially with the situation that the the team's in, I think I think he's he's, he's vital in there just just for his presence and and what he brings. And to be fair, I think O'Brien's quite unlucky. Uh, every time I've seen him play, I think he's offered a lot. I think he's he, he's tried to drive uh, from midfield and he's he's tried to be kind of that driving force. So I think he's uh, he's quite unlucky not to be playing the, the last few games. So so maybe you look at it and you think kind of Mangala, Yates, and O'Brien as a as a three. I, I, I think you get a little bit of uh, a little bit of everything, and you little they keep it solid. And that's when you hope the the front three and the attacking players on the bench can 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 win your games. What did you make of Froyler last night? He got a fair bit of praise for you know being intelligent on the ball and keeping it ticking over. What what was your opinion of him? Yeah, I think he was steady, and I think he I think he dropped in. I think they played a bit of a, a kind of a, a one and a two. I think he played kind of a bit of a deeper role, uh, used his experience and just kind of seeing things out and. And, and kept the ball moving. Did really put the ball at risk at uh, at any stage, and, and and sometimes that's what you need. Uh, you just need to be solid. Uh, need to not keep giving the ball away. Keep getting done on that transition, especially the Leicester game. If you looked at a lot of the first half, it was a lot of transition. A lot of the ball was getting broken down in them areas, and Leicester was just breaking. So if you can become a bit more solid in that way, uh, and not and not make them. Them silly areas, and then you just hope that the the attacking options can can do the business. How do you feel walking out of the ground, then, Greg? Talking to people, was it relief? Was it a bit of disappointment for us? Couldn't get out of the moor and try and threaten a win or not? <clears throat> I I think it was relief. It was certainly relief for me. I I rang my dad straight away saying like we've, we've finally got something. So yeah, it was relief. Like I say, it's just it's just a start, isn't it? It's been such a bad run of form. Five game, five losses. It it had to end somewhere. And I know you said last episode you'd take the point. And I must admit, after like 70, 70 odd minutes, I was like, I need this point now. That's all I'm interested in. So yeah, final whistle, and, and I was happy. And um, like I say, it's just just the beginning, though. Are you going to Wolves on Saturday? Yeah. Are you taking a point? Yeah, because we're going to, like I say, we're going to beat Liverpool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so would you take a point, at Lewis, at Molyneux? Yeah, I think right now at the stage, you, especially away from home in the Premier League, you you take take what you can get. Uh, and it's, I, I understand the the situation, the previous situation, and, and the mood. But if you look at, I I, I just think. Which everyone knows the two games, the Bournemouth and the Fulham game. I think they're the two games what kind of changed the whole mm. kind of feeling and and the the atmosphere around the place. I think the other, the Manchester City, it can happen to everyone, as you can see. That that that's that. Yeah, you don't you don't want it to happen, but you can. It will happen again to another team. But I think they're the two what's kind of changed changed everyone's mindsets and kind of put that bit of a negative feel around the place so yes it's not ideal but i think we can't get too drawn into it it's still really early days and yeah the table doesn't look the best and and what we wanted to see but it's still such a long way to go i think we've just got to kind of remember where we are and how we got here and probably was we ready to get here probably not so there's been a lot that's happened Right in the summer, with the influx of players coming in, so I think we've just got to try and try and be as calm as possible. I know, listen, results like that don't help, but I think the last thing that, as a, as a fan base, is is to create that environment. Whereas last night, if you looked at the manager and you looked at uh, Yatesy, it's a big thing. What they said is that the fans were with them, the ground was electric, and and I think that is that is a massive thing. What needs to keep going because at times, that's going to win us points. Same tactical approach for you on Saturday, Greg. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'd stick with 4 3 3. I would. I just think the, the, being stronger in midfield will help us so much more. And especially when the pressure's on and we're going to get chances against Wolves. Uh, I think we need a few <laughs> few more shots outside the box, you know, give, give other teams what they've been giving us all these games. But I'd stick with the formation. I'm not certain you stick with 
the same team, but you know the key players like the Yates is in there. Definitely, I'd like to see Toffolo start again. Um, but it's it's just nice to have these options, and we're not seeing players go. He has to start with having debates about who it's going to be, and I think that's that's good. It's positive, so uh, it'll be interesting to see. And if you do go to Molyneux and play that way, Lewis, and frustrate, does that help? Is it is it that's a better way to play away from home than at home? Really, isn't it? Because it might frustrate the home crowd. Well, at this at this current position, we are we're in a tough period, and and we're trying to build foundations. We haven't got to go to Wolves and try and be this expansive team and play this certain way. Sometimes need must. There's a lot of pressure on them. They're playing at home. They're struggling. There will be a lot of pressure from their fans. So sometimes, as a as a team, as a players, as as a staff, you go to sometimes these places, and all you have to do is try and frustrate. The longer you can frustrate, the crowd will start to turn, and then little things, the players will start to get edgy. A few more mistakes will happen, and that's when hopefully you get the players to to, to kind of uh, pounce on that. And uh, sometimes they're the best results where you come away and you actually get the three points. Mm. And I suppose, Greg, we just need to see that resilience again, don't we? I suppose the city ground's a bit of a comfort blanket in a sense. Now they have to go and perform like that in front of a, an away crowd. Yeah, it's it's an awful away end as well, Molyneux. It's like sitting in, you know, Brian Clough Lower as an away section. It's it's so hard to get that atmosphere going. But uh, we've had good results in the past at Molyneux. I remember some great days there. So I do think it's the off the back of this game, it's one of the perfect fixtures for us. One of the really good away games where you go thinking, you know what, we've got a chance to to stick it to them, really. And they are on their backs, you know. <laughs> the fans aren't too happy at the minute because they were destined to be the next, you know, Man City at one point. They were big spending, weren't they? But, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be really nice to go there and give it another battling performance and get something out of it. How did you go at Molyneux, Lewis? Score any, good, any screamers there? Uh, no, I can, I'm, I'm sure I can remember Addy, Addy scoring a screamer one, one season, uh, Gredio, I think it was not sure what, not sure what season, but I can remember he scored a, uh, a, a screamer there. Uh, but no, I, listen, it's, it's a tough, it's always a tough place to go. I understand Greg's point about the, about the, the crowd and where the away fans sit. It's, it's a strange feeling. You always expect some kind of away fans to be at some end, whether it's high or low, it's just kind of that common thing. So it is a it's a different it is a different feeling to see the fans from the side. But I like I said to my original point, I just don't think there's there's any pressure in the sense of really to go there. I just think worst case scenario try and come out with a point. But they'll be under more pressure. They have to start trying to get back to where their owners and uh club want them to be. So the pressure is, is definitely more on Wolves and, and not in the forest. You've just got to go into there and kind of use that environment and use that uh, kind of tension uh, to, their, to their benefit, really. And as Simon says in the comments, Greg, Gibbs White to score the winner at the weekend. It feels oh, tailor-made yeah. for him now, doesn't of it? Of course. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, he has to start. He's first on the list then because he didn't leave them very happy either, did he? He had, uh, they were having go at some of his family members and yeah, I forgot about that. We should uh, really use that. He's going to be fired up more than anyone in that team, isn't he? Yeah, I think fans gave his girlfriend some stick or that something. That was it, yeah. Fans. Yeah, that was it. Mm. Right, before we go, uh, Love for Dynamo, Lewis. You're doing pretty well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so far, can't get too carried away. Uh, but no, we've... Uh, after nine games, we're sitting in third. I think it's three points off, uh, three or four points off the off the top spot, and we're in a position that no one expected us to be. The lads have been absolutely terrific so far. Uh, we had an FA Trophy game uh, on Saturday where we lost to a good, good, strong workshop town side, and and that was unfortunate. But now it's just to concentrate on the league and. Hopefully now have a big run now until Christmas and, 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 and see where we are come kind of Christmas time. I'm sure all the fans would wish you well, certainly. I should give, we'll give a fantasy league update as well, actually, because you haven't done one for a while and I want to mention it for Greg. Uh, so, Garbo Red Podcast League, about 1,500 players. First place is Andy Hiller with 680 points, which is absolutely mental. 
he must be in the top thousand or so in the the whole game he's like 22 points ahead of the next person who's tom rowley uh mikey's brother lewis has dropped down uh lawrence sorry has dropped down but never mind he's still having a good season but i wanted to mention it because of you greg because you accidentally transferred out ronaldo for kane or something didn't you or kane for ronaldo it's genius it just shows like how you know i've got that vision haven't i but the problem yeah. is i've joined you you don't tell me all the rules you need to tell me what I can be doing. <laughs> I can't these bench points and, you know, I get stick every time I do something wrong. So, yeah, been thrown into this and I've not been told all the rules. I just liked how you transferred <laughs> Ronaldo by mistake and then treated me and another lad straight away when he scored on Saturday as if you meant to do it or something. Yeah, of course. <laughs> a visionary, a visionary. Right, um, any other business before we go? Greg, anything you want to add on Forest or anything? No, not all. Just how, how good the city ground looked. It was nice to do a little display again for Cooper. We're getting to that season where it's worth bringing a scarf down in it. And we're looking tired, just looked fantastic. So nothing better than city ground under the lights. And I, I really enjoyed it last night. And Lewis, any message to the fans around Forest and perspective and the next few weeks that you would want to say before we go? No, I think that everybody is... It, it's kind of... You have the, the big... The big excitement of the of the first couple of weeks and the first month and then it always settles down and it's a bit of a kind of a flat period so it's just it's just remembering where we are how quick we got to this position and no one expected it and just enjoy the ride and listen there's going to be a lot more tough moments but i think if everyone can stick together if you can keep the atmosphere like it was last night that's just going to be massive for the football club. And I think the big thing for everyone is now not in your forest is, is, is as a football club and as a fan base is really back on the map. And, and a lot of people are understanding and appreciating what, what a fantastic place it is. Excellent. I think we'll leave it there. About 10 minutes shorter than normal, which I think says something about how bad the game was last night. But as we said, <laughs> the last 40 minutes, we'd all take that. So definitely a positive that you don't have to put up with us for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, we shall be back later in the week. Uh, we'll talk more about the Wolves game and we'll do a bit on Forest Women. They've got a big game at the weekend. So do you join us for that. Thanks to everyone who's watched along and commented as ever. Very much appreciated. Do like and subscribe. In the meantime, Greg, thank you very much. Cheers. See you next time. And Lewis, thank you for joining us again. Very much appreciated. Not a problem anytime. And we sh oh, we'll be back next week, next Monday, uh, with David Prutton. He's already confirmed, I should say, even though he's a celebrity with his Neil Warnock podcast now, but he's still happy to join us uh, after the Wolves game with either Greg, Mikey or Temps. So uh, have a good week, everyone, and we shall see you soon. <laughs>